Details now on those better than forecast earnings from Citigroup and the massive settlement the bank reached with regulators over shoddy mortgage-backed securities it packaged and sold ahead of the financial crisis. With the bank putting those soured investments behind it, investors dove in on Citi, sending shares a full 3% higher today. Kayla Tausche has more on Citi's solid results, its settlement with the Justice Department, and what it means moving forward. The bar for bank earnings may be low, but Citigroup easily cleared it in the second quarter with a handy profit beat and a rise in revenues, too. The reason? Trading activity that improved, albeit slightly, in June. Chief Financial Officer John Gersbach forecast a drop in revenues of 25 percent, so a drop of only 15 percent, as it happened, looked relatively better. Gersbach told investors that even with the drop, the bank can operate well. I think we spend an awful lot of time focused on what's going on in markets. And so I think that there are some legitimate questions going forward as far as markets, but the rest of the business, uh, I, I, I'd say we feel pretty good about the revenue prospects. That's because loans and deposits grew and the bank released reserves previously stashed away for bad credit. But an otherwise rosy picture was clouded by a $7 billion settlement with the Justice Department, a $3.8 billion charge directly to Citi's bottom line, wiping away all but $181 million of the bank's profit. Brian Rogers, chairman of investing house T. Rowe Price, raised concerns about the cost of these settlements last week. That's the shareholders' money. I think the good news is most of that is coming to an end. I feel as though the city group uh, situation might be one of the last, the B of A might be one of the last, and after that the banks can look forward and look, basically go about their business and not worry about further fines. For Citigroup, it's a major legal milestone now behind it. Still, some investors like David Katz of Matrix Advisors say the bank trades cheaply but isn't a buy yet. Citigroup's uh, book value was actually down more than 50 percent over that time frame. So Citi seems to have its act together, uh, but it's not as well run as some of these others. Citi still has some unique issues to tackle, an ongoing investigation into fraud at one of its Latin American units, and a failing grade on the Fed's stress test, which CEO Mike Corbett says he's confident the bank can reverse. We still uh, are operating and feel strongly that this isn't an issue with our business model, our strategy, our levels of capital, or clearly our ability to generate. We feel very good about the communication with the Fed, uh, but it's work in progress and we've got more work to do between now and your end. A long to-do list remaining despite an improving economy. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Kayla Tausche. And here to talk more about Citi and the big week ahead for bank earnings is Fred Cannon. He's director of research and chief equity strategist at Keith Bruett and Woods. Fred, nice to have you with us. Let me uh, just start by saying that it seems so strange that Citi can deliver good news for the banking sector on the same day that it settles a huge settlement with the Justice Department. Does Citi finally have its act together? Well, good news is in a relative sense. Remember, a couple of things that were mentioned. Number one is that the um, settlement had already been signaled. It came in line with that. But that $7 billion was much bigger than would have been expected just a month ago and wiped out this quarter's earnings. Secondly is the expectations for the quarter had been quite diminished going in, and they, they got over a low hurdle. That's a good thing. Citi still has a lot to prove, though, uh, as was mentioned. Uh, the litigation issues aren't over. Yes, this is a big hurdle off the mortgage issues, but we have the FX issues, the LIBOR issues, and that issue that was mentioned in Mexico is still in front of it. So this idea that somehow this settlement is finally getting litigation issues behind these big banks is probably a bit optimistic. Fred, let's spin forward to a couple of the other banks uh, later this week, J.P. Morgan, Goldman among them. It is tougher today, isn't it, or you tell me, uh, for these big banks to make money. Their trading revenue is down, interest rates are lower, that pr provides a challenge. Uh, investment banking revenue, despite all the mergers, isn't really blockbuster these days. What do you expect from those two? Well, I think coming off of City, remember coming in a, into the quarter again, uh, expectations really came down hard. This year over year down 20 to 25 percent trading activity. Cities seem to see things pick up in June. That can help them get over a hurdle. But what you said is very important. Making a good return on investment at these big companies is very difficult. Uh, you still have these litigation issues. We like to think of on Wall Street that they're one-offs, but at the end of the day, they do add up over time, and this trading activity is low. That said, these big banks are getting to be a position where they seem very cheap, and maybe, maybe we're getting to a trial 
trough earnings uh, level for these guys. You know, everybody's worried about higher interest rates, but uh, the, the word on the street is that this is good for the banking sector. Um, are these buys? I know that you have for J.P. Morgan a buy on it, but is, is it time to pick up as many of these stocks as you can? As you go into the back half of the year, I think you have to think the Fed is probably going to stick to their word. Who knows if they're going to really raise rates, but they're going to stick to their word that they're going to raise them in 2015. They're going to end, end the bond buying program. There's going to be a lot of people thinking about the Fed exit and financials are a good place to be because it's the one area where higher interest rates at least arguably is a good thing. That's not a good thing for most of the other parts of the economy. So there is some good things there. That said, the truth is, as the Fed mentioned last week, we really don't have a good idea of what this Fed exit is going to look like in terms of bank earnings and bank balance sheets. It's a brave new world because of the four and a half trillion dollar bank balance sheet of the Fed. I assume you heard uh, uh, Brian uh, Rogers just a moment ago talk about how uh, he thinks maybe this is getting the worst of the little litigation risks behind City, though we did mention a couple of the other ones that are still there. In terms of all of the banks, where are we in that process? Are we in the seventh inning, the eighth inning, the fifth inning? Where? It looks like on the mortgage issue, we're getting towards the seventh or eighth inning, I would say, and especially with Citi getting this big settlement behind him. I think if we can get these DOJ settlements behind it, much higher than expected, will and the FHA, FHFA behind us, we have gotten over the mortgage issue. But the fact is that there's still a lot out there. FX is just being... Um, underscored here. What about these issues on fraud in Mexico, the whole asset management liability issues and the payment systems and the issues that have been raised? Remember this whole issue of um, BNP and these criminal charges uh, in the U.S. It, you know, let's face it, the French and Germans are going to look pretty hard at the U.S. bank operations over there. All right. Fred, thank you so much for coming on the program. It's always a pleasure to have you. Fred Cannon of KBW. Thanks. Great to be on.